here we are in Google Chrome. Here I'll be explaining a little bit of how Google Chrome on the iPad works. So this is the iPad Pro. Full disclosure, I am using the um, a Logitech keyboard with the Logitech MX Master 2S. So you can see the mouse here. I will also be using my finger as well, just so you can see. So in this instance, you can see here, I'm using my finger to pull things down and so on. So let's go through the different features that is in the... <clears throat> so let's go through the different features that's in Google Chrome. And you can see if this is a good choice for you uh, as a browser for the... <clears throat> You can see if this is a good choice for you as a browser for the iPad Pro. So, first thing we're gonna look at is bookmarks. So this is quite straightforward. You see there's mobile bookmarks here and I'll show you how you add a bookmark. It's pretty simple, the three dots here. You do have to scroll down um, here to add the bookmark. So I will go to a website, let's go to Stripe. Yes, any website really, so stripe.com, very beautiful website, good choice by me. But yeah, you can just see that um, it's not quite the full version of the site. So it's not Safari. I, um, I will have another video of Safari going through Safari and then we can maybe compare different versions of the website because Safari has basically the MacBook or the full desktop experience of the browser and Google Chrome has an app version. So yeah, what I was gonna show you was this. So you can add bookmarks here, pretty simply, that's done. And then you can find your bookmark here. And that's just gonna be your mobile bookmarks here. So yeah, so you can see that's pretty simple. Of course, you, in the, on the iPad you can hold the command button and you can see shortcuts. The next thing we'll look at is history. And you can see here, very simple, stripe.com here. Obviously clear your browsing data and all that kind of thing. Just the usual jazz, I'm just going through so you guys can all see what's actually here and see if you can actually use this to replace the desktop version that you're using or you're currently using. Because obviously if you wanted to go full in on the iPad and the iPad Pro experience, you're gonna make sure you're gonna you're gonna wanna make sure the apps are up to scratch. Um, one thing that you'll see is missing, and you know, I'll just say up front is there is no there's no extensions, uh, there's no Chrome plugins or anything like that. So it's kind of you get what you get. That is I think the biggest issue that we have with this version. Um, outside of the desktop version. So one thing we'll see here, you can't actually zoom out. So I'm gonna pinch here. You can't zoom out in terms of like making this text smaller. All this is gonna do is like hold it here. And this obviously you can't, it's not usable. You can of course zoom in, finger zoom in, but you can't zoom out what I would call properly. So if we just jump into Safari just super quick. I don't wanna do a full comparison, but just super quick. You'll see in Safari, not only can you zoom in and out, you can also do this and just get that smaller version. So this is what you could typically find in a full desktop version of a browser, being able to go in and out. You can of course use, I think you can of course use this. Um, Yep, so you can use it here. So you have command plus, command uh, takeaway. So you see, you can use the, the keyboard shortcuts. So I think that's really what Google Chrome should add, but they don't have it at the moment. So all we have is pinch to zoom and you can't actually zoom out. So if you look at tabs, you can see you can have a lot of tabs. You can drag the tabs. So you can drag the tabs with your finger. Um, it doesn't look like you can drag it with the mouse though, which is quite strange. So you can't drag it with the mouse, but you can drag it with your finger, just like this. 
which is pretty cool. So they just kind of bunch in at the end here. It's usable, let's say that. So let's go to the end. Okay, sorry, to finish off the tabs, you can obviously click here and get a little, get in there and see all the different tabs you might have. So yeah. So yeah, that works fine. Uh, it's obviously a little bit different to what you're gonna find on a desktop version, but it works pretty fine. It's, it's, it's way more reminiscent of what you'll find on your mobile phone for iOS. So let's go, okay, let's try this. So one thing you can do that you can't do on other browsers, which you'll see in my browser series, is this. So when you click new window, it just opens up a brand new window for you um, right side by side. You can, of course, get rid of it, just like so. And then we can, you can even use the mouse to dismiss it like this and then just slide it up. That works pretty well. So in terms of mouse and keyboard support, you can see, you know, as soon as it finds text, it just changes the cursor just as it should. It doesn't, it does, okay, no, it does have right click support. Works a bit funny, but it does have a bit of right click support. The mouse, the MX Master 2S works very, very well. In my opinion, the scrolling is nice and smooth. Um, it does do this weird funny thing if you over scroll and this white gap appears, but it doesn't really change too much of your experience. So it works, no problem. So as we saw, okay, look, you can control the globe. <laughs> That's pretty cool. But uh, what you can't do for some reason on this website anyway, is you can't highlight this text. So you can highlight this text. So look, this might just be a quirk of the particular website. So I won't go too hard on that. So because, because you can ha highlight this as well. So that's all cool. And uh, you can't do, so if I look at this, you can't right click like you would on a traditional desktop browser and then you do a new tab like that. So you, if you look at this, you can obviously do command T. I'm gonna try, I've never actually tried this. I'll do command and then click and see what happens. So no, command click doesn't take you to a new tab as it does um, on the desktop version. If you wanna do a new tab with the mouse, Ooh, I'm not actually sure. I think you might just have to, let's see, can you hold? Okay, so that's what you're gonna have to do. So you're gonna have to hold the link and then open a new tab or a new window and it'll do side by side, which is pretty cool. So we can just take this away, hold it up and then just swipe it away. So let's zoom out here. So as you can see, the Chrome browser is pretty good. Um, I think it's pretty basic. If you're a power user on the desktop, you're gonna really find this a bit of a downgrade, um, in my opinion. We can just check out quickly the incognito mode. So yeah, it just works the same really. No real difference. I'll just take this out and put back in. And then obviously downloads, it'll take you to your folder in the files app. And okay, yeah, you can do a lot of read later. So that is something that is, uh, uh, it feels a bit more native to the iPad, just kind of read later. It's not really something I use on the desktop version, but it's something I see a lot. So when you go just here to your reading list, you're able to come back if you have any like articles or anything that you want to read. And you can just swipe to get rid of it. So all in all, this is the iPad Pro version of Google Chrome. For me, it's pretty basic. Um, there is actually one last thing I wanted to show you, which I think is quite important. And that is essentially, see that's a bit of a bug right there. But that's just essentially playing a video through the browser. So I've gone on Vib, Vimeo, and you can see here, Turn this down. Let 
and you see it works super well. So what you'll find with iOS uh, generally, and you know, I'm sure if you're familiar with iOS, you'll know this already, but maybe if you're coming from an Android tablet or Android generally, this player for the iPad, um, iPad Pro in browsers, this video player, the way iOS does it is all standardized. So in Android, usually the player is a bit, um, for each different website will have a different video player where on iOS, all of the video players are the exact same as this. So they all have this AirPlay um, icon and you can all do the 15 second skip and skipping forward and backwards and also these functions here. Now, I, I, I kind of like that. And of course you can do picture in picture, which is really nice. I quite like that it's standardized. That means there are some players which are better out, out there than um, this one that Apple forces you to use. But in truth, you know, having that consistency is uh, pretty useful in my opinion. So yeah, as I was gonna say, I think this is a solid um, browser for the iPad Pro. Is it the best? I don't think so. Is it the best for working? I don't think so. But as a general purpose browser, if you've used Chrome before on your phone, you'll be very much used to this. If you've used it on your desktop and you're dropping to the iPad Pro to make it your laptop, I think you will find that there's a lot of features missing. Uh, a lot of your kind of creature comforts will be gone. Uh, of course, like all your Chrome extensions, they won't be here. And um, I don't really foresee them being here anytime soon, unfortunately, uh, because you know, the way things are made for um, computers uh, and the web and versus how they're made for iOS. I don't think, I think the the barrier to creating the, uh, I don't even think they even allow you to create extensions for the Chrome version on iPads. So unfortunately we probably won't be seeing any extensions anytime soon. So I think for entertainment purposes, this is perfect. You can play the video, you can scroll, you can save stuff in your reading list. You can bookmark the sites you like. So for entertainment purposes, it's completely fine. But for professional, I don't think so. Because even security wise, we didn't actually get too much into security, but if we go to, yeah, so I might be wrong, but yeah, so okay, I'm not wrong. So yeah, they don't even have face ID uh, for password recognition yet. So they, they've actually, to be fair, they've put it on iOS for Chrome, but for the iPad OS, they don't have Face ID uh, for your password, which is unfortunate because Safari does have it. And for me, I really like the way that works. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll be making loads of iPad Pro content coming up. I'm gonna have more iPad Pro browser reviews coming up. So you guys can all compare the browsers. Um, if you're thinking of making the iPad Pro your main computer, you will have all the information in terms of browsers, um, which one to pick, which one not to pick. If you liked the video, if you found it helpful, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you're interested in more iPad Pro content, please subscribe. There's much, much more coming. Um, the iPad Pro 12.9 inch M1, M1 is coming and I will be getting that and we'll be doing more tests. If you have any questions, I answer all questions. So any questions, hit me in the comment section and I'll be sure to help. And as I said before, if you could hit that like button, it takes a moment for you, but it means the world to me. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.